Hello everybody, it's Jaguar Week here at JM on Cars. Now if you haven't seen already, by now we should have covered at least two very different Jaguars. Yesterday I will have put out a video featuring a wonderful modified Jaguar Super V8, which is more or less an XJR. If you're the sort of person that looked at that video and you thought, that's a really good car, but I just wish it had more doors, then this is the car for you. Today, I am driving a Daimler limousine. I've never driven a limo before, and when this car's owner, Tony, got in touch and offered me his newly acquired project for review, I simply couldn't turn it down. However, before I continue, I really should make sure that I am correctly dressed for the occasion. There we go. I know my friend Laurie would be so very proud of me. This may look a little bit like a funeral car because it is, or at least it once was. This car was built about 20 odd years ago by a company called Eagle. And when it was new, it cost in the region of 75,000 pounds. To put that into context, it was about 50% more than an XJR of the time. As perhaps a little bit of an in-joke, this car is now known as the X3000. It weighs about 800 odd kilos more than it did as standard, and the funny thing is that from my seat it doesn't really feel like much has changed. It's only when I look in the back and I see my passenger Tony and I realise that he's a lot further away than normal do I really realise that anything is up to just poodle along at, you know, granddad kind of speeds. This is actually a really decent car. The steering is quite nice. The engine is very responsive. Now, it is a, a fairly old-fashioned lump. By the time this car was made, that four-litre six-cylinder was getting on a fair bit, and it was basically in the process of being replaced by the then much more modern V8. Now this car, as you can probably tell, is a little non-standard, although not by much. It's wearing a more modern, sort of slightly sexier wheels, which are a little bit anti the whole Jaguar look, but I kind of love it for that exact reason. It's actually reasonably easy to keep up with modern traffic, and I'm doing sort of a little bit shy of the speed limit here, but actually it's a really pleasant thing to drive along. Now I had one simple question for this car's owner and he gave me possibly the best response I've ever heard. I said to him, why did you buy an old Daimler limousine? And he said, because it's cheap. This car was an eBay find and perhaps one of the best eBay finds I've ever heard of. He paid for this the princely sum of 1,021 of your earth pounds. It's not a sort of nightclub style limo and it will perhaps forever have the stigma of being a funeral car attached to it, although I presume most of the people that were transported in this were still living. His current plan for this is to use it for the intended purpose. He's going to start ferrying people around. So if you want to get in touch with him, I'll put his details in the description below. He also runs a YouTube channel of his own called Volikin Project, and he does for the most part mobile phone reviews, which was his sort of former occupation. He also keeps the people up to date on this car's progress, and you'll see on there its transformation from its original condition. After its initial term of service as a funeral car, this was then adopted by uh, Oxford, I believe possibly even Oxford Council, who used it to uh, take part in some sort of challenge with a, another twin town, I think, in Europe, something like that anyway. There's more details and things on his channel, and if you're interested in, in what it's like to really run and own a car like this, uh, go and check the channel out. In terms of maintenance and ownership of one of these, some of it is exactly what you'd expect and, and some of it is not. Obviously there will be a number of bespoke parts on this car, but 
unless you actually have some physical damage to deal with, you shouldn't really ever have to replace those. The running gear is all basically standard Jaguar Daimler type stuff, and a lot of the electrics and things in here will be the exact same as a, a regular Jag of the time, which means if you're lucky, they'll be cheap to get, and if you're unlucky, they really won't be. A few things in here still need doing, and he's been doing quite a bit of work on the car himself. He's recently replaced this headlining up the front, which I have to say actually looks pretty darn good. Having replaced a headlining in a car myself, I know that it is no easy task, so kudos to him for doing that. The larger wheels and tyres on this car do make it ride actually not bad. The standard wheels and tyres apparently in this were a little bit sketchy if you were trying to make progress, and I really have to tip my hat to Tony for being the sort of person that buys a limousine and then decides to try and have fun down the lanes with it. It's <laughs> it's remarkable. And this car's got 76,000 miles on the clock and actually feels rather new. Yes, in styling terms it's a little bit out of date, but then Jaguar have seldom been at the sort of cutting edge of style when it comes to their larger cars. In terms of luxury features, the car is actually sort of short on them. In fact, in its original specification, it didn't even have a radio fitted. All the wiring was still there, but not connected up, because where the car had been cut in half to make the extension, all of the radio wiring was cut, so although the, the rear antenna and everything else would still work, uh, they, there was a bit of a gap in the middle. So it's now fitted with a more modern uh, DAB item, which does the job just fine, apparently. This engine pulls the car along very well, despite the fact that it weighs close to three tons, and for just general duties, it's really remarkable how easy it is to deal with. It's a little on the cramped side up front, because the entire thing, of course, is not designed for the comfort of the driver. It has been designed to make the passenger's life as pleasant as possible. It's very interesting as well that this car doesn't actually have an awful lot of leather in it. It's got a sort of half leather, half cloth thing going on. And that's actually a very old school way of doing things. In case you weren't aware, leather was often seen as the lesser material. Some old cars, are Rolls Royces and things, I believe, they only used leather on the driver seat because it wore a bit better. Your passengers, the clients, probably the owner of the car, would want to sit on a nice comfy fabric seat and so this in, in that regard is, is quite old school. When you're driving something like this you do have to be very wary of the length of it. Uh, to look at it, it is, it is kind of a funny thing because the, the front half all looks pretty much like you'd expect it to. And the back half is oddly weird, it's actually very short. The boot isn't the most generous, at least not in proportion to the car, because again, this was designed for carrying people and not really any cargo. There is an issue out there, particularly in the USA, with many limousines having been done uh, sort of unofficially and often improperly. It's actually quite a severe problem that they currently have. Uh, however, this one has certainly been manufactured to the highest standards. And I was trying to work out quite how they made it. Obviously the car's been cut in half, but I was trying Trying to work out where the middle door came from. I can't quite tell whether it's a back or a front door that they've then sort of reshaped to make fit, but perhaps if you know a little bit more about how these things are put together, I would really like to know. It's actually just surprising how nice and easy this thing is to drive. It's genuinely pleasant. I'm actually really enjoying myself on this sort of lovely day out in the Jag. It's really rather nice. However, if you are driving one of these things, you're kind of doing it wrong. The place you want to be is back there. So that's where I'm going to go. So I'm now in the correct end of the limousine and I've got the beautiful Tony up front driving away for me. It's actually rather nice in here. Now, your more traditional nightclub type of limousine obviously is going to be all blacked out and kind of and actually honestly i i find those kind of grim places to be I, I find that they're often just a bit tacky and a bit horrible whereas this thing is really nice and light and airy so if i am just sort of going to an airport or something like that this is a much better thing to be in really and it is remarkably comfortable yes the car may be technologically quite out of date but the thing is we worked out how to make cars ride really nicely 50, 60 years ago, and Jaguar are one of the best at that. I'll certainly give them credit for that. I, I struggle to think of something you're gonna find which will give you this level of luxury and this number of seats and doors for this kind of money. Now, 
I would be lying if I said that the car was perfect. There's still a few issues, and, and, and Tony is currently working hard to resolve those. The aircon is not currently perfect in the back here at the minute. It's also, by the way, very odd for me to be doing a car review when I'm actually not driving. It's actually quite novel. It's lovely to move the camera around and, and do all that sort of stuff. So I must do more of these kind of fancy limo type reviews. And then uh, it's a right down here, please. I love this. This is nice. The car actually isn't isn't ludicrously long, which does make the act of driving it quite pleasant. And actually being in it is pretty decent too. Uh, it's a little warm in here at the minute, but that, that's something that's being solved. That's the AC problem. Just, oh, it's lovely. The, the floor is kind of unusual. So it feels like you really, really step down into it. It feels like there's a real big dip. Uh, I think part of that is because in order to keep the rigidity in the car, they obviously made this side nice and uh, nice and tall, but then I guess it's, not really any different to before because the original doors still fit on the front. The transmission tunnel obviously is, is extra long. It's not the transmission tunnel, is it? I think because the gearbox is probably up the front, but you know what I mean. The drive shaft tunnel, whatever. Um, that runs obviously the whole length of the car. Now, I would say that you can probably get like, I mean, you could get technically, I guess, five people in the back here, but you get four like really comfortably. Um, so you can put another person up front. So I guess you get seven people in here in sort of total. I believe in the UK there's also a restriction with having more than sort of seven people in the car as well because it then becomes uh, something different from a legal perspective. A few numbers for those of you that are interested. The car weighs, as mentioned, about 2.7 tonnes. It will, on the motorway, achieve around 27 miles per gallon. Top speed, if you've uh, got the stones for it, is probably about 110, maybe, before it gets scary, probably, hypothetically. And um, around town, obviously, MPG is going to be considerably worse. Insurance is actually surprisingly decent. This car is currently insured with Footman James as part of a fleet policy because this is not its owner's only Jaguar. He is a bit of a Jag man. And stuff like this is really shockingly cheap because they know you're probably unlikely to stick it in a hedge. Uh, now, you do have to be careful because it does actually still have the standard brakes on it. So if you were trying to drive it too enthusiastically, you probably could, um, you know, send it ditchwards. But as it is, actually, it works quite well. So yeah, there we go. That is a look at the most unusual uh, Daimler X3000 limousine, now available for hire. And um, <laughs> my, hat, my hat's off to, to Tony for taking the plunge and buying this. I think he's got a bit of a bargain and I'm really glad to see him doing a lot of the work. Him and his girlfriend have been doing quite a bit to make sure this car is then uh, tip top again because its previous owners um, just drove it and didn't really maintain it. So he is making sure to right all of the wrongs and turn it into something actually rather marvelous. But to be honest, this feels like a, a wonderful place to be and another proper Jag. Oh, we're even following something really unusual down there. I don't know if you can see it very easily, but uh, you, know, you can't if the camera's all blurry. We're following a Maserati uh, 3200. There you go, it's trying to focus on my camera, but you can see there the little boomerang headlights. This is quite a cool place to spot cars around here. Uh, we're gonna take a left in a minute, please. I, I could get used to this. I, I really, really could. It's actually novel for me to not... I drive so much these days, it's actually an utter sheer delight to be driven for once. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to check out Tony's channel, Volokin Project. We'll see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.